fans of alternative science fiction miniatures, post-apocalyptic warriors and dice bags, thank you very much for joining me for an out-of-a-pack review of the Ghosts of Gaia female science fiction warrior miniatures by Bad Squidoo Games. As part of my ongoing quest to find interesting, unusual alternative science fiction miniatures, mainly to build up my militia force for playing Horus Heresy 30k games, at Derby Worlds this weekend, I bought a 10 figure discount set of the Ghosts of Gaia miniatures by Bad Squidoo Games. Now, as I understand it, this was run as a Kickstarter project in 2016 and was delivered early 2017 and then the figures went on to be sold through Bad Squidoo Games. Every single miniature is different. What we're gonna do in this review is have a look at them. Now, when I went to buy them, there was one of the characters who wasn't in stock. So instead, I got this one to make up the 10, which is the Raging Annie miniature. And this is kind of like an avatar of the actual owner and founder of Bad Squidoo Games, Annie Norman. And this was sculpted by industry veteran, Kev White. So we're in good territory here. What we're going to do, uh, these are all metal miniatures. We're going to open up all 10 blisters, get the models out, have a look at them, see what they're like, and also look at the quality as well. So first observation, they come in a nice clamshell plastic pack with foam. Uh, these are reusable, so they're great. So yeah, very well packaged. These cost between five and six pounds each. And if I remember rightly, it costs about £40 for the squad deal. So you save, I think it's a little bit over 10 quid. So that's quite nice, actually. That's what I did. It was, it was classic. Intend to buy a small number of figures and come away with a full squad. So yeah, there you have it. Now, I particularly like these because I've already bought the Victoria Miniatures Female Arcadian Guard. And I saw these as fulfilling a complementary part of the army to those as well. Right, let's start off with Raging Annie. So let's get the tutu out of the way first. Yeah, I think there's a bit of an in-joke here. Annie herself, I think, is a bit of a fan of tutus for some reason. I don't know, ballerina dresses, you can tell me which your correct nomenclature is. But if we ignore the tutu, this is a very nicely sculpted, proportioned and realistic looking miniature. It's got some uh, rigid body armor on the torso. This is very alien style. It reminds me of the armor that Vasquez and Drake wear, the smart gunners from the, from the 1986 film Aliens. And she's got pistol sidearm, some very Judge Dredd style knee pads, and groovy boots, an assault rifle, or carbine perhaps, or maybe even an SMG. A dice bag. I think this is a nod to her original, to how she started out as a dice bag firm. Yeah, that's good. Got a couple of shoulder pads again, some Judge Dredd influences here, as well as the carbine she's got this machete i really like this because i've got this sort of this curve on the blade it's quite intriguing it's a bit of clean up and the actual face yeah i think that's an excellently sculpted face really well done yeah fantastic miniature it's quirky but very cool i guess if you're so inclined if you weren't the fan of a tutu you could cut that away and modify it put some equipment pouches on and change the look of a miniature to be um, more tactical perhaps now, one thing, you don't get a base for this, so we're gonna to have to get hold of a, or find a slot of base somewhere. Which is a bit of a shame, yeah. I think really should probably get a base and for a figure like this that is made for a base. It's a cool model though. So there you go. So that's Raging Annie. Right, and then in no particular order. So the first one of the Ghosts of Gaia is Mina, armed with a dual SMG. Now these are sculpted by Shane Hoyle. As in stand it, Shane Hoyle had involvement in sculpting the original range of Necromunda miniatures. And that's another reason why I was interested by these models, because we're on the cusp of the re-release of Necromunda. So clearly these ladies have some interest for people wanting to get back into Necromunda. Very nicely proportioned. They're supposed to be 28 millimeter heroic miniatures. So a pair of quite menacing looking SMGs. These models would also work really well for cyberpunk style games. In particular, let's say Shadowrun, if you want miniatures to be shadow runners, really good for that. You could even use them as Chaos Cultists. Yeah, that is Mina. Again, these don't come with a base, but they have a base molded on, so they're a bit more ready to go. They're still gonna need basing up. I still like to see these with a plastic 25 millimeter or equivalent base. The next miniature is Eve the Sniper. So very futuristic looking is this one. And this one's quite heavy, noticeably heavier. I think this one costs a pound more, six pounds. And she's kind of 
propped up taking a shot with this intimidating looking sniper rifle. Got this ghillie suit, a mod line to take away there. Cool detailing. A friend of mine was saying that this is reminiscent of the sort of ghillie suits or camouflage suits that the Japanese army used in the Second World War. And she's got a space helmet on. Got a seam to take away there. Hmm, looks a bit pitted that does. I think, yeah, I think we've got a bit of a, some lot you can, there you go, you can see that there's some pitting on this recess. That suggests that the mold wasn't quite at the right temperature when this was cast. So I've got a bit of a loss of detail. So I'll have to see how I'll go with fixing that. I've come across situations like that with models in the past. He used to be real bad for it. I think it was um, alternative armors. Yeah, I had a lot of stuff off them. I mean, we were talking like 25 years ago, which had quite a lot of pitting, if I remember rightly. Yeah, really cool model. Got like a power lead running into this enormous scope. That could equally be a male as well as a female character. There's nothing really to mark that out as being female. Just about balances. Right, let's do this one next. This is Dusty, and this is armed with a flamethrower. Look at the flamethrower. That looks like a real garage flamethrower. Quite improvised. A little bit, uh, a little bit of flash and whatnot to take off at the end of that barrel. Just straighten that a bit. That's all right. Got some nice three-dimensional depth on this one. And I presume that's a spare, is that supposed to be a spare fuel canister? Oh no, maybe that's a, an air supply or a rebreather for this uh, respirator or air mask she's wearing. Probably to protect her from the noxious fumes of her victims as they get incinerated. Really cool, I do like that one, that's really nice. Really funky. Oh, she doesn't want to stand. The base of this is a bit rough and ready. That's going to need cleaning up before it'll stand. Yeah, very good. That is Dusty. And next is Jade, which is armed, or who's armed with an auto pistol and stun gun. And Jade also comes in a little plastic bag. Cool. Another nice respirator gas mask type setup she's wearing. She's got this awesome hairdo. Oh yeah, there you go. She's got the breathing cylinder again. And then look at this suit she's wearing. It's almost a bit like a still suit or something from the film Dune. I don't know. Yeah. There's the auto pistol and the stun pistol. Oh my God, look at that. You see that the stun pistol's got like a pair of barrels. Oh, that's neat. So almost like a space derringer, perhaps. In terms of quality, I mean, there's a bit of a mold seem to take off. Not too much so but it will need some cleanup right who's next we shall do let's do this one abra the psychic very intriguing looking model to put it mildly i just dropped the camera a bit so she's got a little plastic bag again so some serious hardcore breathing equipment going on here or, I don't know, maybe it's a universal pack she's got that's, I don't know, stuff wide into her head, her mouth, her arms. Weird, I mean, I don't know. What is it? Is it her psionic enhancer apparatus? Interesting. Is that in the style of an Egyptian ankh? Interesting detailing. It's stylistic, the staff, but at the same time it looks like it's functional as well. Reminds me a bit of, um, what do you call them? Is it Stormlords or Stormcallers from War Machine for Signar? Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of that. And then she's holding her hand, her hand up and it's got this sort of maybe projector on her palm. Maybe it's a psychic projector. These crazy bunny wing or bunny ear hairdo flanges, I don't know what to call them. So yes, well, there you go. That's an intriguing model if there ever was one. Moving on to Pris. So nice original Blade Runner reference there for those of you with an interest in replicants very topical at the moment given that uh, Blade Runner 2049's just been released I like Pris Pris is one of the miniatures that I had in mind to buy 
after I originally saw them. Quite a bit of sun coming in now, the uh, day's brightened up. She's armed with what's been called a smart gun, so maybe that's a sophisticated rifle. Maybe it's a rifle with self-guiding bullets. Again, she's got a breathing equipment on, same sort of respirator canister. Crazy hairdo. <laughs> if you didn't like the hairdo on one of these, you could you could modify that, or you could even add to it. Quite straightforward to do. Not sure she, no, I'm gonna lay her down. She's a little bit iffy if she wants to stand. Let's go on and do another one. We shall do this one next, which is Angel, which is armed, or who is armed with a Gatling gun and has one of the biggest top knots in the history of top knot warfare. She's in a little bag. I guess one thing Bad Skidoo could do is I could, she could save herself some cost on packaging by boxing up some of these sets in a larger packet to reduce on repeated packaging. That'd be a thought. Right, so what she got, she's got a knife and then this underslung Gatling gun, so it's like a micro-sized Gatling gun. Very syndicate, isn't it? Yeah, very syndicate indeed. If you play the computer game, particularly the 2012 re-imaging, which I'm a big fan of. She's got a cybernetic bionic eye or vision enhancer. This big top knot is almost a bit Sisters of Silence from the Horus Heresy and Warmer 40K. She could certainly fit in with those warrior women. And again, just so much variety. Oh, she's gonna stand, yep. Yeah, such an eclectic mix of styles. So we've got two left. What should we do now? Let's do Ratty, and then we'll finish with Hera. Ratty, armed with the heavy smart gun. Yeah, so, hello Vasquez in this post-apocalyptic range. I'm not sure what that little black splodge is there. I don't know if that's a bit of a mold or something. I can't quite get at it after I don't know if that's a void or if it'll need filling later. So yeah, very, very alien style smart gun with this targeting array come, I don't know, mechanical support or gyro stabilizer on the gun. Very um, sort of slim body armor, super Judge Dredd style knee pads, definitely an elbow pad. Again, she's got the respirator on, bald head. You know, I mean, she's quite shooty, but this one would definitely go with Sisters of Silence again. I'm sure all you guys and girls could think of lots of other applications for these models. I guess that's part of the strength of a set like this is they can be used for lots of different things. Yeah, nice, I like that one, that's really cool. And then finally, we have Hera, armed with a plasma pistol and sword. And Hera looks rather high tech. So she's got a sword or a machete. I know it's a sword because it's got a handguard, so it's like a rapier. Maybe it's a power rapier. A plasma pistol, which is this weapon. So futuristic looking energy pistol, perhaps. What appears to be some sort of life support system, a fully enclosed helmet. Look, some really nice detailing on this, like the camera and all that stuff. I like the design of this because it's very close fitting. So it's clearly not, this isn't a pressure suit she's wearing. This looks like it's a compression suit, one of the practical designs for a suit for working in atmospheres with no oxygen or low oxygen. You can't use them in a vacuum because they, they'll blow up. It's a concept that's been looked at for life support on Mars, where basically you have a the fabric of a suit compresses the body, so basically you don't have any air gaps, and then you reduce the amount of air volume you have to deal with to just kind of like in effect what you're breathing. So yeah, really nice design, do like that. Excellent. I think that might be uh, I don't know if that may be my favourite, but it's hard to pick one. She's going to stand though. No. Well, there you go. The Ghosts of Gaia by Bad Squidoo Games. Almost all of them. There's one missing which wasn't in stock, and that's why I've got Raging Annie. I'll pick the other one up at some point in the future to complete the set, and that'd be really neat. So I'll have a 10, so that make two squads of five, and a leader or any permutation thereof. Extremely characterful, absolutely bursting with character. Uh, big thumbs up on that front. Production quality on these, just looking over them, I think there's a fair bit of cleanup to do, and there's a couple of bits that suggest maybe not as well turned out as the best of the metal miniatures at the moment. So I'll see how that plays through when I actually do the cleanup, and I'll talk about that fully when I do a final model review of these. Share your thoughts and observations about The Ghosts of Gaia by Bad Squidoo Games. I'll be very interested to hear what you all have to think, as always. If you own these models, or if you've got any other parts of the Bad Squidoo range, please do share those ideas, as always. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. 
I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.